bet horse racing on DRF Bets. We'll match your first deposit of $200. Get free expert picks and past performances, plus weekly cash back. All from Daily Racing Form, the most trusted name in horse racing. Hi everybody, Mike Beer here. We've got a couple of stakes races down at Gulfstream Park on the turf on Saturday. Four two-year-olds beginning with race number four. It's the pulpit stakes. This one's for the Colts and Geldings. It goes, again, it goes as race number four, sort of earlier on the card, a field of eight. This is seven and a half furlongs on the turf. The purse is $75,000. Let's take a look at this field of eight right now. Todd Pletcher has the two favorites uh, on your morning line. The number four, Airy Gold is nine to five on the line, shipping down here and stepping up off of a you know pretty dominant front running maiden win up in New York in his most recent start. His stable mate is number seven, Sendero, um, who has, has started out his career sprinting out of town. He ran well in both of those races. Pletcher stretched him out for his third start. That was the Awad Stakes up at Aqueduct. And he ran fine in that race. We're gonna take a look at, at the replay of that uh, stretch run in a little bit. Um, he ran okay in there. He's your three to one. Uh, second choice on the morning line. Lights of Broadway checks in at 9-2. to two. He's number two in this field. This is going to be his turf debut, but he's another horse who's at least been in, in good form on the all-weather surface. Comes in off of two consecutive wins. The most recent of those, a little stakes race down here around two turns. Um, so we'll see if he handles the grass. If he does, I suppose he could contend uh, in this race. Let's start out by taking a look at the time for him. U.S. pace projector for this race. And they have uh, the, the your morning line favorite, Ari Gold out there on a clear lead at the pace call of this race. And I guess if they ride Airy Gold the way that they ran, that they rode him uh, in that most recent start, the, the maiden win up in New York, you know, I suppose he could be on the front in here. That pace, I, I don't want to say it was fast, but it's not like he was walking. It felt like Flavian Pratt, who was riding that day, Louis Saez has the call on Saturday, felt like Pratt, you know, wanted the lead with this horse, sent him forward, and then just you know, sort of let this horse power along on the lead, um, never really got into his way there. And every time that they tried to approach this horse, either up the back stretch or around that final turn, um, Pratt would just let it out a little bit. Airy Gold was there for him every step of the way. And it was a, a very convincing maiden win when all was said and done there with a, a solid 80 buyer speed figure too. Certainly a good performance for him. I do think they'll probably just go right to the front with him again in this race. And then we'll see if any of the other horses in here, and there are a lot of question marks as far as surface and quality goes among um, you know most of his competitors in here. Certainly the five congruent could be forward in this race, but he's not an all-out speed kind of horse, the horse on the rail. Maximo has shown speed in the past. The most recent start, they sort of went away from that, took the blinkers off him, took him back off the pace. It didn't really work out on the all-weather surface. Uh, we'll see if he's better on the turf. As far as Maximo goes, and we'll start out talking about him, three state, straight stakes races. He broke his maiden. Um, the first time they stretched him out on the all-weather surface here in July. Right on the front end, uh, blowout win by over 10 lengths, only a 59 buyer. The pace wasn't fast. He just had all the best of it there, getting loose on the lead and then just sort of running away from a, what looked like a pretty bad field through the stretch. His three starts since then have all been in stakes races, one on the dirt, two back on the all-weather. Um, didn't run, you know, wasn't really competitive in any one of those three starts. Uh, two starts back on the armed forces, they sent him. And he actually went a really fast pace in that race. The race was won by Lights of Broadway, who's back in here. But this horse went a fast pace and then just totally retreated through the stretch there. Um, probably just went a little bit too fast early in that race. So in his most recent start, the Juvenile Stakes, they took the blinkers off him and they just tried to totally change up his running style. Took a hold of him, rated him back to last at the start. He never made a run into that race. Um, there's a little turf pedigree here. Uh, Brethren, not a great turf sire. Um, this dam um, did win her only turf start in her career, her career though. The second dam was a really good New York bred named That You Miss Blue. She was good on turf and she was good on dirt. Um, I don't know. I didn't have a lot of faith in this horse, but I do think there, it's possible that they go back to front running tactics here. Maybe that would give him his best chance to win. Lights of Broadway is the two. He's nine to two on the morning line. All three of his starts have come around two turns down here at Gulfstream Park and on the all weather surface. Felt like he probably needed that that debut run and he's won both starts since then he certainly improved uh to win those races the the maiden win which came on september 10th they just put him right up there sitting on the pace that day uh took over in the stretch really wouldn't let a game and amnestic who's also back in this race wouldn't let that horse into the race and, and won it as the favorite and won it pretty convincingly he was good breaking his maiden this horse they came back two weeks later in the armed forces stakes it's the race we were talking about uh, with maximo uh, just a, a few moments ago. Maximo went a fast pace in front. Lights of Broadway sat off it in a clean trip on the outside. Um, came to take uh, take on the the eventual runner-up, a horse who took over ahead of Lights of Broadway in the stretch. And then 
Came with a really good finish to close that horse down. Slight buyer improvement there, um, up to a 66. This horse is by City of Light, who is, you know, a, a turned out so far anyway to be a decent turf sire. The, this, there's a lot of quality on the bottom of this pedigree, but it's all for dirt. There's not really a ton of turf pedigree here. That concerns me a little bit about Lights of Broadway. Uh, the Dam, who only went one for 10, is a sister to three really, really good dirt horses, including graded stakes winners, Golden Lad and Broadway's Alibi, a couple of horses trained by Pletcher. They were both really good. The second Dam, who was also a stakes winner, is a sister to Dialed In, another really good dirt horse. Um, we'll see. If this horse handles turf, he can contend here. I would want a price if I was going to bet him. Not sure if you're going to get one, but we'll wait and see about that. Uh, the number three, Brumble Waffle Toes. Um, hard to make a case for here. This horse is one for nine in his career. Comes in a little bit light on figures. They stretched him out for the first time, or for the second time, and his most recent sort of did break his maiden going a two-turn mile on the all-weather at Presque Isle. Um, they stretched him out down here in an allowance optional claimer last time he was in for the price. He finished an even fourth at a big price. I don't know. I thought he was hard to like in here. Ari Gold, your morning line favorite, the number four. Pretty good debut up at Saratoga, sort of towards the end of that meet. All in all, he didn't really have a, an excuse there. He got a good trip. He had, they, they weren't looking for the lead with him there, though. They rated him, um, but he had dead aim on that race. Through the stretch, wasn't quite good enough, but he was keeping on to the end. All in all, a useful debut. Second uh, start got rained off, and he was involved in a contested pace there in a race that was won by a closer, a closer who then came back to win the Remsen uh, last weekend with a 90 buyer. Um, so he ran fine in his second start on a sloppy sealed racetrack. Back to turf last time, and this is the race we were talking about at the Open. We'll look at the replay now. This is just Ari Gold taking charge of, of uh, this, this race right from the start and just really never letting this field. And I feel like this might, might have been an okay field too, but you see him through the stretch there, um, just kicking on gamely. The, the runner-up is trying very hard in here, and Ari Gold's just not letting that horse into the race. Good performance, 80 buyer speed figure, probably goes to the lead again here for Pletcher and Saez. He's the horse to beat. I have no argument with that. Number five is Congruent. He's going to make his turf debut here for Antonio Sano. Um, horse is shaped with a little bit of potential early on. I really uh, feel like he was taking steps forward uh, through his first three starts. Uh, they tried to get this horse on the turf in the Laurel Futurity back on October 1st, and that race got rained off. Uh, so they left him in to run, and here's the we'll look at the replay of that race right now. I thought this horse ran really well in here. To me, he just basically did everything right. Moved forward early in the proceedings here, sat in behind horses for a long way. You saw him there in the upper stretch just sort of waiting uh, for uh, a place to go in the stretch as that sort of pack tight up a little bit um, but he drove right through between horses in the stretch uh, dueled with the runner up briefly uh, put that horse away and was clear to the wire really liked that performance I thought he ran really well in that race um, I think we can all agree that um, he'll get a pass for the uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile in his most recent start at 92 to 1. Um, comes back into a, a much more likely spot here switching over the turf again they tried to get this horse on turf two starts back and I think they probably did that because he's got plenty of pedigree uh, for this surface he's by Tappet um, his dam, uh, who, you know, was a good horse on synthetic. She was also a good horse on turf, a stakes winner on the grass. Um, her best full so far is a horse named Ocean's Map. Five wins in his career, all of them on turf, stakes win, stakes placed. He um, had plenty of distance in, his, in this pedigree too. Uh, Ocean's Map wanted to go long. Um, I just think there's a lot to like about this horse, and I like his running style as well. He's going to be up close in this race, and he's probably going to be a fair price. The number six is Dangerous Ride. Um, one of this is a horse who broke his maiden first time out going five furlongs, and I guess he ran okay that day. The only time they've run him on turf, it's been all stakes since that winning debut. The only the only turf start was the Tyro going five furlongs at the end of July at Monmouth, and he was just nowhere in, in that race. He didn't get off to a great start in there, and then he just didn't really do any running. He's gotten better since then. The most recent start is the juvenile stakes, two turns on the all weather here. A couple of these uh, his rivals were also in that race. This horse um, wound up finishing second in there. I thought personally kind of an opportunistic second, just sort of sat on the rail the entire way in a good trip. And he had a shot to win it. He had room down on the inside through the stretch. He wasn't good enough. He got up for second, however. And then um, he was even more opportunistic to be placed first in that race. And Amnestic, the winner, was disqualified for some uh, interference, which did not affect Dangerous Ride in the stretch. This horse inherited the win. He ran fine in that race, and maybe he gets a good trip here and takes to the grass, but I, I didn't really like his chances in this race. Sendero's the seven, second choice on the morning line, stable mate of your morning line favorite, uh, Ari Gold. This horse, I really liked his first two starts sprinting at Colonial. Um, the debut feels to me anyway like a race where he was really unlucky. 
um, not to win that race. I just did not get a good trip at all. Lost position, wound up, uh, you know, sort of in a bad spot in that race. And then he made a really good late run through the stretch to just miss and, and settle for second there. But he ran well. He came back in his next start. And, um, you know, that was just a dominant win in the Jamestown Stakes. Uh, I read rode this horse with a ton of confidence that they just sort of kept him way out in the track, uh, wide around, um, staying away from the other horses in there. And this horse won for fun. Um, as soon as I read asked him to the stretch, he quickened clear. I, I really liked that performance from him. Um, he came back and they stretched him out in the in the Awad Stakes at the end of October at Aqueduct. And we'll look at the, the replay, the stretch run of this race right now, because Sendero... Um, I felt like he was going to stretch out here, and you see him through the stretch here. This is a race where it feels like just about everybody's got a shot at it. That's Sendero down on the inside, and he has a real look at this thing. And there was a brief moment there, sort of as they passed Mitch Stretch, where I actually thought he was going to win this race. Um, he's right there with every chance. He's just going to wind up getting out finished at the end. Um, did he run well in there? Yeah, I think he did. Did he have an excuse, you know, a real excuse not to win? Probably not. It's a it's a decent field, though. I don't want to be too hard on Sendero for not getting the job done there. I still thought he ran an okay race. Um, Pletcher is going to put blinkers on for this one, and um, Irad's going to retake them out here. I guess those are all positives. I still like this horse. I still think he's pretty good. I don't want to be too down on him um, for his most recent start. I, I feel like the question you have to ask yourself is what kind of price do you really want on Sendero in here? Um, I do think he's probably going to be second choice in here. And then you just have to decide, um, you know, how short you want to go. And I, mean, I think he can win. I was um, sort of conflicted whether I wanted uh, any kind of short price on this horse, however. And Amnestic is the eight. Um, this horse is a fair price on the morning line. This will be his turf debut, so we'll see how he handles that. But this horse ha has really shown, I, I think, has really shown some talent in his most recent starts. The figures aren't really there, um, but this horse, I thought, ran really well when he was second uh, to Lights of Broadway uh, back in September. He came back in his next start, um, again, on the all-weather surface around two turns. A really game win there. He had to sort of squeeze through. He got shuffled back a little bit, first of all, and then he just sort of um, had to squeeze through on the rail in the upper stretch. I thought he did uh, he did really well just to get through there into contention, and then he battled on to prevail at the end. That was a good performance. They came back in the juvenile stakes. We'll look at this, the stretch run. Um, this race, you're going to see him get disqualified here, but another another race where he just runs really well. His, his rider took a hold of him, gave him a good trip in this race. Um, did get shuffled back a little bit once again, but all in all, the trip was fine. He's clear in the stretch, uh, fanning to the outside. He comes with a really game finish to overtake these horses and prevail. He was ultimately disqualified here. If you watch the head on, he did come over a little bit and uh, bump a horse to his inside. The horse that he bumped is actually the favorite, who felt like he was going nowhere at the time. I don't know how much I agree with the disqualification, but he certainly did come over and bother some other horses. Either way, he was best in that race. It was another step in the right direction. He's got a little turf pedigree too. This is the female family. Um, if you just go back a couple generations of Chelsea Flower, who you know won the Flower Bowl, the Sheep's at Bay, the Miss Gorilla, a really good turf horse. So this horse certainly has license to handle the grass. And, and I don't think he's impossible at all, but he's going to have to improve because Pletcher's got the two favorites in here. Um, and I think they're both you know, going to be pretty hard to beat. Ari Gold is probably the right one. I wanted to take one shot against the two favorites in here with Congruent, who will be my top pick in here. Um, I, I do, I'm interested in this horse switching to turf. Really liked his Laurel Futurity two starts back. I know it was on a different surface, but I thought he ran really well there. He's bred to handle the grass. He's got a good running style for this race. He's supposed to be a fair price. I went 5-4 seven and eight in the first of two stakes races for two-year-olds on the grass on Saturday at Gulfstream Park. This one is the pulpit. It goes as race four, approximate post time, 1.38 Eastern time. Good luck.